Hi, my name is Heather Richmond. Welcome to the channel. Hope everyone is doing well on this New Year's Eve. And I am wishing all of you a very prosperous 2022. Um, I know that anyone in resonance with my message is undergoing a time of great transformation and um, sort of, I, from my own perspective, I see this year, this new year, as a symbolic reflection of the, um, the rewards that are to come from our hard work. So many of you, you know, have been through processes over the past particularly few years that um, have, whether you have wanted it to or not, <laughs> these experiences have um, led you to a place of greater and greater clarity and a purified heart. And I'm realizing more and more at this time that, you know, the old, the old self, meaning the self that we created through this experience of, um, you know, on the 3D earth plane of existence through the ego, that self had to sort of, you know, die in many ways. You know, the image of the, the phoenix has been coming to me a lot recently. And it's for the purpose of, you know, a cleansing and a renewal and a, and a rebirth. And when we go through this process of cleansing and rebirth, we're then able to um, sort of sift through the ashes and pick and choose the the qualities of our personality that um, you know we do like that we do want to cultivate and bring with us, so to speak, in this you know to this new version of self, this new world, this new experience. Um, to give sort of a concrete example for me personally. I've seen this manifested in my sense of humor. And I would say that over the past few years, more and more, that sense of humor has has dwindled and sort of been rendered um, kind of inert. But it used to be something that was, you know, very important to me. Um, but very recently, I've noticed that my sense of humor <laughs> seems to be returning and it's just more from like a purified state. So I, I guess a good analogy in addition to the Phoenix rising analogy is, you know, if we take off all of our clothes and maybe we even go so far as to to give away all of our, our clothes or throw them away, everything in our wardrobe, you know, we just get rid of everything. And then we can very consciously and intentionally select the, you know, the pieces of our wardrobe that we, that align more with our new version of self. And so, um, all that to say, I do know that um, this really is a time of uh, great prosperity because we have done the work, we have been in the trenches, and, you know, um, we have uh, sort of gone through the tunnel or crossed the bridge, I would say. That's from my perspective. And if you're, you are in Again, if you're in resonance with these messages, then um, in all likelihood that applies to you at some level. So um, I just want to encourage you if for whatever reason you feel like you're struggling in this moment or, you know, things are just not quite working out for you yet, truly hold the faith and keep going. Um, because I can assure you that there are beautiful, beautiful things on the other side. And so what I want to talk about sort of in alignment with that is, um, this idea of, you know, out with the old in with the new. 
and you know that can of course take place in kind of a physical way you know we can um you know clean our homes and our our space to make room for you know again kind of just more conscious intentional things that we wish to surround ourselves with and in all likelihood you know you have gone through the process of um bringing to the light of awareness much of your unconscious matter and so now the things that are coming into your awareness that are less than pleasant experiences um are sort of coming to you for specific soul lessons, I would say. So it's not, um, you know, so much about like causing any form of suffering because for the most part we've transcended that. Um, but it's more about just continuing to remain aware and bringing up having the ability to bring up those unconscious things at will more so rather than, you know, things just crazy uh, sort of scenarios being for, uh, foisted upon us in our, in our experience. So um, recently over the past couple of months, I've really been focused more and more on integrating all of this, you know, work in consciousness that that I've done into the physical. So you might say bringing heaven down to earth. And so I've gained, you know, a lot more intuitive insight <clears throat> into some practices that can be helpful for that, um, for allowing, for, for helping the physical form to hold the energy that um, that we have been um, cultivating and harnessing. And this is not, as I've said several times about just things that I've worked on in consciousness, you know, this is not something I ever researched or went about, you know, went out looking for or any of that. All of these things um, have happened to me and I have experienced them firsthand and just been intuitively guided by my higher aspect. And so um, in the coming days, I hope to share more and more of these practices to kind of help um, solidify you know, the, the work that, um, that you've done at the higher levels. And again, sort of bring that down to earth. So these are a couple, this is a, a practice that I found very helpful for, um, sort of releasing, letting go of old undesired experiences and then transforming that same energy because of course we know that energy is never destroyed or lost um, for transforming that energy into um, a creation that is you know more um, conscious and in you know, done with intent. So I'm going to go ahead and read the post. Uh, the post also is titled Out with the Old, In with the New, and I will make sure that's posted um, to the YouTube community tab as well as my Patreon and my Facebook as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read this and I will stop and elaborate um, or explain anything as needed. All right. We are quote unquote dead when our connection to infinite power is illusorily severed for the purpose of ultimate expansion via contraction. So I've talked a lot about the fact that this is, you know, the 3D earth plane of existence is the upside down world. And so what we have thought of as life is in actuality from a, a spirit point of view, it is in actuality death. <laughs> and it is only now that we are beginning to experience true life. When the connection is restored, magical things begin to take shape in our reality. 
To be awake in the dream means to be able to consciously shift frequencies to align with desired experiences at will. Before we can operate in this way, we must break through and rise above the firmament, which is the screen of space upon which our individual reality is projected. And I'll go ahead and read the note that I put with this as well. Um, This information is not something I'm 100% clear on, so I'm only sharing the parts that I do understand and if it resonates with you then you can connect that with your own existing knowledge and i'm sure that that more un- that greater understanding of this concept will be coming forth for me in the coming days so the the sort of note to that microcosmically within the physical body this is related to the cornea of the eye this meaning the firmament or the screen of space in time this foggy veil that has kept the soul asleep becomes clear at this we become a pure channel or gateway for spirit to work through us on the physical plane all right so back to the post when we become the embodied Then we become the embodiment of the Holy Trinity while still on earth, though at a certain tipping point, we are no longer subject to the confines or the limitations of a 3D earth experience, unless that is what we choose to do. Rather, we consciously raise and lower our frequency in order to align with divine will. Meaning, if a soul lesson is needed, the individual can consciously choose to align with an undesired experience for the purpose of learning and expansion. So we might call this shadow work, essentially, but it's done, again, with intention and full consciousness of what is happening. So once you have that connection and you understand that this is just a soul lesson playing out in front of you, there is no suffering involved in that. Or if there is, it, um, you know, it dissipates very, very quickly because you're able to bring yourself back to center. In the third dimension, our individual frequency is governed, meaning held down, held in abeyance, to remain in a low vibratory state. Because of this disconnect between the individual operating in 3D, meaning the ego self, the personality self, or the lower self, you could say, and the multidimensional higher aspect of self, these soul lessons seemed in the past to be random because we could not trace the effect back to its cause. So, you know, when we have these experiences that are undesired, that are unpleasant um, in 3D reality before awakening, then it just seems like chaos and we have trouble understanding, you know, why this has transpired. It just seems very random. All right. So 3D experiences are always taking place in the quote unquote past. Beyond the third dimension, all is happening in the eternal now. Therefore, if you find yourself in an undesired state, you can release old experience in the following way. So this is where I get to kind of the actual techniques that you can use. And I'm going to put, um, I'm going to give another sort of disclaimer or um, an addendum, a note to this as well. Of course, these are not the only ways to go about releasing the old and creating the new. These are simply strategies that I've been intuitively guided to practice. As in all things, always follow the guidance of your own inner compass. Okay, so the first thing that you can do to release an old experience, or we could just say old energy, 
because it's all energy, right? Is the first thing you need, you should do is to remind yourself consciously that it is past energy that is playing out in front of you. So in the higher levels of, of consciousness in the fourth dimension and above, we are imagining, um, our experience. And by the time that's the key word time, <laughs> by the time that experience comes down into physicality, into the world of time in the third dimension, then that is pat. It, it's something of the past because again, and I'm looking at this particular aspect, you know, um, through a linear perspective, but, um, if you can just stop and remind yourself, okay, this is the past that I'm seeing out in front of me, then that does wonders. And just that in and of itself is, um, very, very helpful. So you might look at this as like, um, like a, a film or a play. So obviously someone has to write the film or the play. They have to write the script. And so they're imagining that, but it's not until the script is, you know, finished and the actors are cast and, you know, everything has had a chance to come together, um, in a physical way that we can see that imagining that, that written script played out before us. So that's a very good um, way to look at that. Then you want to discover and you can just simply set the intention to do so. And when you set this intention, it allows the, the brain to send off signals or send off a command to, to do this. So you can discover the unconscious assumption that has led to the experience. So let's say you are in the middle right now of an undesired experience. Maybe someone in your reality is reacting negatively to you in some form or fashion. Maybe they're angry, um, they're sad, frustrated, whatever. So um, you can, if we know who we are and we know our true power that imagination creates reality. We know the cause, but we may not exactly be able to trace it back to the specific imaginal act or, and, or the unconscious assumption that has led to this undesired experience. So, uh, to kind of clarify this idea, if we imagine something, um, playing out in a certain way. If there is unconscious matter that is clouding that um, desired manifestation, then that's going to be sort of a filter through which you are viewing this experience. And you may not even be aware of that. So this is where um, shadow work can come in very, you know, intentional shadow work can come in very handy, um, you know, in order to, you know, become more and more aware of whatever seems to be veiling um, or covering or fogging up the lens in that way. And um, so unconscious matter creates blocks in our vision, meaning we are unable to perceive what we have already aligned with. So it's like we're, we're just on the wrong frequency. We're on the wrong, tuned into the wrong wavelength. So when we clear this blockage, our vision is corrected and we gain access to the manifestation. So all things exist at all the, all the time. So it's a little bit inaccurate to say that we create our reality because nothing is new. Everything exists at all times, eternally. Anything you can possibly possibly imagine. And so it's just a matter of aligning with those specific frequencies. Then you want to consciously allow yourself to feel the desired feeling that arises with the recognition of the unconscious matter, whatever that past assumption may be. 
it could be a past memory or it can just be an idea that um, comes to your light of awareness. This feeling can then be processed through the heart. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next um in the next step that I'm going to discuss. But uh, when I say processed through the heart, you can actually, this is something that you can feel physically, not, not simply um, energetically or in theory. Then give permission to the body to physically feel the emotion as it travels to the solar plexus or what we might call the gut mind. And I, I've heard people refer to the solar plexus and the gut as two separate things. For me, I, I don't know for sure. You know, I don't know what the common like consensus is, but from my perspective, there's no difference. It's one in the same. I, I use those terms interchangeably. So you want to allow this emotion to travel to the gut mind and release the energy so that it can be transformed. And again, this is something that you really can physically feel. And I find it helpful once the emotion arrives there to almost envision it, well, not almost, but <laughs> to, to envision it as like this energy um, flowing out from the stomach you know, from the abdomen, abdominal area, um, because it really does feel like that. And so, um, you know, that will be something that you're intuitively guided through. So that is a way to consciously release old experience. So something that is undesired. Okay. When we wish to then, and it does not have to be immediately after, um, when we then wish to transform that energy, whether it be that next minute, the next day, the next week, whenever, um, we then are able to um, follow the same steps, essentially, just in the reverse order in order to bring in new desired experiences. So what you're going to do first is bring a scene into the, the eye of the mind, which implies that you have what you want. In other words, what will it look like when it is done? So let's say you are um, looking to manifest or to align with, um, you know, your your true love in a in the physical. You're you're looking to call that person in and align and align with that reality. Um, you can you know get as specific as possible, I would say. So, I mean, you can bring up a, a vision in your mind's eye of you and your uh, significant other, you know, sitting down to dinner together or going out or, you know, whatever that means to you specifically. Um, and so you bring that into the, um, the eye of your mind. And again, we're living in the end. So it, whatever it's going to look like when it's done, then you want to give the body a permission to feel this scene through the solar plexus or the gut mind. Because again, we're going sort of in reverse order. And when I say reverse order, um, that's not to be confused with, um, you know, creating in an upside down or a backwards way. I just mean we're going through these steps in the, um, the opposite order. So once we can feel that in that scene in the quote unquote gut mind or the solar plexus, this we do that because this is the connection point between what we might call heaven and earth or spirit and matter. So this is what allows the non-physical to be brought into physicality. The activation of the gut mind will happen automatically when the time is right. So if it does not happen right away, I personally would recommend not trying to force it because that will add resistance to the act. Um, this is something I had um, only heard about in theory, 
And just over the past couple of months, this is something that has, you know, come to fruition in my own experience uh, in a, you know, a more concrete, tangible way. So um, it's not something I would have, you know, uh, if I had heard these instructions, you know, several months ago, I would not have been able to follow the steps. I wouldn't have understood what it means to, you know, feel it in the gut mind. So again, this will happen in everybody's own time when the, when the physical form is ready. So don't try to, you know, force it in any way. So then you're going to take the same vision and you're going to consciously allow the vision to be brought up into the heart. You want to conjure the emotions that you will feel when you experience the physical manifestation of your vision. The feeling of relief can be a very powerful um, emotion to feel for creation in this way. You will be able to physically feel the heart pulsing outward. So again, this is something, it's not just that you're visualizing it. Truly, you can, you can feel this um, like radiating outward. You can picture it also um, as the heart like radiating pure love to the thing desired. One um, visual that comes to me often is like that. Um, I don't know if it's a specific character, but like uh, in the old cartoons where, you know, the the cartoon character would meet uh, a girl and his heart would start, you know, pounding through his chest and you could see it. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what it can feel like at times. So it's, it really is a beautiful thing. So then, then you want to bring up the vision to what I call the theater of the mind. And you want to focus more in this, um, in this step on as much five sensory reality within that scene as possible. So um, the example that I've used before that's um, from Neville Goddard originally is the idea of a rose. So a ro you may not physically have a rose anywhere near you, but if you think about it in the eye of your mind now, you can feel, you can uh, picture I don't know how to say it exactly. You can uh, envision what it is like to touch the rose. You can, you know, conjure the feeling that you would feel in like running your finger over the petals. You can conjure the feeling of what that rose might smell like. So that's what I mean when I say you incorporate as much five sensory reality as possible. So, um, for example, like, um, in my earlier um, example, the you know finding the love of your your life or calling in that person, you might envision or you know bring to mind what it would feel like for that person's arms or, to be around you or um, you know to smell their cologne or you know whatever. Um, but again, you want to incorporate as much five sensory data as possible. This binds the thought form in order to for the brain to then send out the correct signals to begin organizing and creating the experience. It may be helpful, I find this helpful, to imagine the brain or visualize the brain lighting up and like firing off the signals, which will be turned into physical experience as you do this. So this is something I see in that in the eye of my mind when I close my eyes at night pretty frequently. I see this sort of like these, um, the brain, you know, sending off this or firing off these signals. So that can be helpful as well. All right. So in conclusion, I know this is kind of a lot of information and this was a bit of a, a long video, but in conclusion, each individual has the ability to release and create in this way and will come into this power at exactly the right time as determined by the greater soul. Victory over death does not only apply to the idea of physical death. Death is the separation of imagination and power, the inability for the soul to consciously create a desired reality. 
not just in theory or in vision, but in actual experience. When this connection is restored, we are victorious over anything that may appear to be an obstacle because you have the full knowing that truly anything can be transformed. You are never, ever, ever stuck. I don't care what the scenario is. Truly, when you know all of this, um, you have an understanding that everything is subject to your um to your own imaginative power. This is an incredible time of transformation through the realization that our end is our true beginning. And I'm going to leave you with a, um, a piece of scripture from Galatians 4, um, two, verses 2 through 5. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by the father. So also, when we are under age, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the time, the set time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we may receive adoption to sonship. So this is speaking of our reconnection to our power. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to leave those and I will absolutely do my very best to respond to you in a timely fashion. And if you have left a comment in the past that I've not yet responded to, know that I will. I just always have to follow my sort of intuitive timing. And so sometimes my response can be very late, but I always, I truly do always read everything. Thank you guys so much for listening.